it's Brewbird. Welcome to the Distilled Kitchen where we're making British dishes and cocktails because every good dish deserves a good drink. I'm embracing my move to Scotland by making a very tourist-oriented meal. When I visited Edinburgh, all the breakfast spots on the Royal Mile seemed to be serving a version of the full Scottish breakfast. So today, that's what we'll be making. In this breakfast, we've got butter toast, two rashers of back bacon, a slice of haggis, a slice of black pudding, a slice of Lauren sausage, two link sausages, one tomato, one teddy scone, three button mushrooms, one fried egg, baked beans, and a nice breakfast martini to wash it all down. But if you aren't in the mood for alcohol so early in the morning, then a nice cup of tea will do too. So get ready for a breakfast that will put you flat on your back. First, we'll pour our can of Heinz baked beans into a bowl and set it aside until we are ready to put it in the microwave. I've got a nice hot frying pan here with a bit of oil. We'll put our link sausages in and then we'll add our slice of black pudding and our slice of haggis, being sure to remove the piece of plastic around the edge. Then we'll add our Lauren sausage. Now the Lauren sausage is something I've only discovered since moving to Scotland. It's a flat square shaped sausage and is usually bright pink in color and is made with minced meat, rusk and spices. Finally, we'll add our two slices of back bacon, giving everything a turn at the two minute mark with the most useful cooking utensil ever invented in Scotland, chopsticks. Just joking, though I'm sure my preference for chopsticks is giving away my race right now. Anyways, after four to five minutes, we'll set our cooked meat on a warm plate and cover it with some tin foil to keep it warm while we finish the rest of our big fry up. The meat left behind a lot of greasy flavor in the pan. It'd be a shame to waste it, so we'll fry up our button mushrooms, tomato, patty scones, and egg in the oil. So it will soak up all the leftover flavor from the meat. We're a few minutes away from serving, so we'll pop our slice of white bread into the toaster and start to microwave our bowl of baked beans so that everything is nice and hot when we serve it. All we're missing from this plate now is our toast. Buttered, of course, because the one thing this breakfast desperately needs is more fat and some of our Heinz baked beans. Moving along now, it's time to make our breakfast martini. This famous marmalade cocktail is really the only drink suitable for our massive, heart attack inducing Scottish breakfast. We'll start by peeling a nice long strip of orange skin for our garnish and then we'll juice half a lemon. We'll fill our shaker half full with ice cubes, then we'll add a super generous spoonful of marmalade jam, Paddington Bear's favorite food. And then we'll add 45 milliliters of William Kerr's gin. The gin we make at our distillery has sweet and bitter orange peels in it, as well as some lemon peel. So it really complements the citrus theme of this cocktail. Next, we'll add 30 milliliters of Contro, which is a type of orange flavored liqueur produced in France, and 30 milliliters of the lemon juice we squeezed out earlier. We'll put it in our shaker and give it a solid 15 to 30 second shake. We'll take the lid off and put our handy dandy Hawthorne strainer on. There we go and strain it into our martini glass. We'll take our orange peel and fold it in half to release the essential oils in the peel and wipe it over the rim of the glass to get the nice scent of oranges as we drink our martini. I'll admit, I kind of screwed up this martini as most recipes call for 15 milliliters of Contro and lemon juice, but I accidentally doubled those amounts because I used the wrong size jigger. I was planning to make it again, but then I tasted it, and oh my goodness, it was brilliant. I loved it so much, I decided to just roll with it the way it is. And if you're afraid of being judged by society for drinking so early in the morning, you can make yourself a socially acceptable cup of tea, with milk and sugar, of course. Now we can finally sit down to our full Scottish breakfast and our nice cup of tea or breakfast martini. And before you ask, yes, I was able to finish this entire plate of food and the breakfast martini all in one sitting, though I spent the rest of the day lying in bed to recover from it. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Maybe.
be here in Australia. 